Good evening, everyone. My name is Ryan Wagner, and I'm the Wilderness Program Director here at Camp Manitowish, and welcome to the Advanced Information Webinar uh, for this fall. And uh, tonight, I hope to cover a couple different things um, in order to allow you uh, to make the right decision on whether an advanced level trip is right for you. Uh, we will be uh, going over um, each of the trips, um, but more importantly, we'll be looking at expectations of the campers, expectations of the participants, and uh, we hope to clarify any assumptions, uh, relay information about each of the trips that are available, and uh, like I said, set those expectations. Um, if at any time you can't hear or see me because of the internet issues, uh, please type a question in and hopefully um, I can fix the problem uh, quickly. Um, an overview quickly. Uh, it should take about 25 to 30 minutes to cover this webinar and then I'll stop recording and that portion will be posted uh, on the web and for the, the rest of you that are live, we will answer questions at that time. Uh, we'll cover expectations, cover the history of the trips real quick, uh, and then do some trip overviews, specifics. Uh, we'll look at the schedule of events um, from the time they get here to the time they go home. Uh, we'll also look at uh, some of the staff training that we do, the certifications, and I'm not really going to get into cost, but if you have questions on that, we can talk about that as well. So first and foremost is trips expectations. Um, these outpost trips, all of you have been um, sending loved ones or coming to Manitouish yourselves uh, for quite some time. And uh, the expectations change at this level. Um, when they get to an advanced level trip, uh, these are very intense trips. So they're 24 to 30 days long. And we want to make sure that all the participants are on the same page as as far as what they need to be doing in order to prepare themselves for a trip of this um, uh, length and what happens on these trips. So uh, of course they will need to have obtained previous wilderness stripping skills uh, necessary to begin a trip like this. Um, you all have an invite so that means uh, your leaders and myself felt you are capable for um, being able to do this trip. You need to be in good physical and mental health and condition when you arrive here at Manitowish. That's something that um, kind of catches people by surprise for whatever reason. Uh, they kind of come here and they're like, I'm going into the wilderness for 30 days or 24 days and I'm going to get in great shape. Uh, you probably will get in great shape, but you should arrive in great shape as well because um, as you know, the wilderness is, is very unforgiving when it comes to that. And, and you need to make sure that when you arrive, uh, you're ready to hike or you're ready to paddle uh, for an extended period of time, and, and that takes some preparation. Um, the mental uh, mental condition and health thing goes the same way. You, you shouldn't be coming here to escape something back at home uh, that typically doesn't work out. So you need to make sure when you arrive, uh, you're ready to do this, and uh, you've cleared your head from all else going on in your life, and you're able to... Um, commit yourself to your trip group and your trip. The biggest thing is you need to understand that these trips focus on character and leadership development. They will be fun, they, you will have a great time, but character and leadership development is what we push our staff to challenge our participants each and every day. Uh, they will be made leaders of the day, facilitators of the day, or of the activities, whatever they're doing, and they will be continued to be pushed along the way on these trips and that catches people by surprise where they may just want to sit back and have fun the entire time and that's really not what these trips are intended for uh, I'm not I'm not positive that most of you would sign your kids up just to take a vacation for 30 days and pay this much money uh, without getting something out of it so growth is pretty natural on these trips however we're hoping that we can take that above and beyond and make leaders that will um, change the world and, and go back home and, and transfer that experience back and hopefully prepare them for college or wherever life might take them. And know and understand um, and minimize the risks that are associated with backcountry travel of this nature. The North Shore of Lake Superior, Saskatchewan, and the Rockies um, offer a host of different risks. I'll get into those a little bit, but you need to understand those and start acting as um, 
mitigators of that risks of those risks and ensure that you can um, maintain yourself physically and emotionally throughout the entire trip uh, in a safe manner. Um, being able to travel in uh, in a small group setting for this amount of time takes a lot of effort and a lot of work. Uh, one of the things that I sit down and I talk to our, our leaders about is that these kids cannot avoid or these trip groups um, cannot avoid problems. And that's the awesome thing about these trips where you can't um, simply get mad at somebody and then avoid the issue and it'll go away because a month long uh, in a remote setting with a small group of people does not allow you to do that. You have to take on these difficult situations head on um, and, and resolve them in a, in a proper way uh, out in the field. Otherwise, the trip is just not going to to work itself out. It's just not. Um, so that's what I love about these trips. And this is really that first level that uh, you have to resolve those issues. And, and traveling in a small group of people with a small group of people for a long time, um, you will have conflict and you will have issues that come up. And that's one of the best things about these trips because you're kind of forced to work through those and uh, find solutions. Um, you need to be able to take on those leadership roles. Um, this is another portion of the uh, the Manitouche experience where you're we're handing off that experience. Our leaders are told um, to hand over that leadership. They shouldn't be holding the maps. They shouldn't be giving directions in the campsite after day five even. Uh, the participants should be running these trips. So it truly is their trip to run and uh, they should look forward to that opportunity and that is an expectation of them. And then, of course, no one abide by the Camp Manitouche policies. Um, these participants coming in, I, I always I always ask them what they felt like when they were in summer camp and looking up to the outpost people. And they're like, oh, my gosh, they were crazy. Like, I, I never thought I would be an outpost person uh, participant. And now here I am at the advanced level. And it surprises them. And I'm like, OK, no, of course, you need to act like it and make sure you're setting a good example for those participants that are coming out there. We've had trouble with that in the past, and I don't think that's going to be the case moving on. I meant to be flipping through pictures, and I didn't, but here's some pretty pictures of the areas. Um, quick history, the Western started in the 70s and always went out to the West into the Rockies. Um, not necessarily in the winds. I believe we started in the Bighorns possibly in the 70s and we kind of moved into the winds and uh, wind river range of wyoming and the bear of montana and recently we we kind of rediscovered if you will the idaho saw selway bitter root mountains uh, so we have those three different locations and if you start checking out the application before monday i believe it might be posted online um, but you'll have some choices there between which of the three areas to go to depending on <clears throat> your gender, and um, each gender has two locations to choose from. Uh, the Canuck, uh, our longest trip in the 30s, uh, that is kind of our pinnacle. We still put names on our boats, uh, on our in-camp summer camp boats um, of those leaders, and we've always, we haven't we have always gone to Saskatchewan since the 30s, but we have um, done a Canuck, if you will, since the 30s, and we started in the Quetico. And I believe moved up into Ontario and then over into Saskatchewan and Manitoba recently. And the Mariner has been around since the 2000s. I want to say 2000 or 2001 was the first time that ran, and it goes along the North Shore Lake Superior. So our newest trip at this level and our newest trip at the um, expo level as well. Let's get into some uh, specifics of these trips. And one thing I'm not going to necessarily cover here is gear, but note that you can go online and there are what to bring lists, and I'll put this in an email following up with this, what to bring lists for all the gear that you'll need, and if you need to go out and purchase anything new um, per the trip you're doing, um, that will be on that what to bring list, and you'll be able to find that, and we can definitely answer questions about gear um, after the webinar is over. Um, so just a quick note on that. So the, the Canuck. Um, this is a 30-day trip. You arrive at the same time as our expo, and the reason for that is the trip is A, a little bit longer than the Western and the Mariner, but B, uh, we combine transportation from 
uh, Manitouish up to Saskatchewan uh, with the Canucks and the Expo Canucks. And that saves us um, approximately $30,000. So um, it's a good move on our part. And uh, it's also nice because these Canuckers get to spend an extra week or so in the wilderness. Uh, Northern Saskatchewan and Manitoba, the rivers uh, primarily are in and out of Wollston and Reindeer Lakes. Um, it's subarctic terrain where um, boreal forests are, are are the primary forests up there. Large open skies, as you can see here. Uh, a lot of white water, black bears, moose, wolf, northern pike, trout, walleye, um, fishing mecca, if you will, of all of our trips probably. Um, and you will travel and camp. Um, along the way uh, up there. I'm not sure about mileage, maybe about 300 miles or so, um, possibly even more um, along the way. So you'll travel to and from camp on a bus, Moose Mountain bus lines, and they will uh, pick you up uh, along the way and drop you off uh, at your starting point, either the Geeky Bridge or Wollston Lake or somewhere up there. Um, paddling and portaging, similar to uh, the Boundary Waters or the Quetico, if you did one of those trips. However, the lakes are bigger, so you probably won't be portaging as much. Um, but when you do portage, those portages are typically a little bit more rugged. Um, I should mention that you won't um, you won't get resupplied, so you'll carry all 30 days of your rations, and uh, which is pretty awesome. I jumped ahead on pictures there, but you'll use trailhead prospectors, these canoes here. Uh, we keep these canoes up in Saskatchewan um, in order to simplify logistics at uh, Churchill C River Canoe Outfitters. And uh, I have here that you'll cover about 15 to 20 miles per day, so uh, approximately 300 to 400 miles. Um, and you'll do plenty of whitewater along the way. It's also the first level of trip that we allow whitewater to be done, so people are usually pretty excited about that. Um, as far as our risks associated with this trip, you know, typical risks of um, whitewater and bear and moose encounters. There, there is no grizzlies, but you could have black bear in your camp and then moose, um, mama moose, they're pretty uh, furious when you come between them and their baby moose, but that's pretty low occurrence. The Mariner Sea Kayaking. This one is going along the northern shore of Lake Superior, um, approximately Silver Islet um, to Montreal Falls. Uh, so Silver Islet's on the western side of Lake Superior, just across the border uh, from Minnesota. And the Montreal Falls is a little bit north of the border uh, from Upper Michigan. Again, large open water and uh, do have some large crossings. There's opportunities, I think, to do even a seven-mile crossing on this trip um, out to some of the islands there. You have high cliffs, waterfalls into the lake caribou on one of the islands that could be that large crossing black bear deer moose trout um, a whole host of wildlife there um, awesome pristine beaches that are pretty remote uh, you're not going to see very many people on this trip you will receive one resupply along the way and we kind of been changing that up and finding out what is appropriate there um, or wherever we can get that resupply to happen but it's about halfway You'll cover about 400 miles, um, and uh, you'll stick close to land for the most part, but uh, you definitely will hit um, some foggy days where you're right on land or you can't even uh, paddle in some wind and some waves. So uh, the, the, the weather on this trip is very unpredictable and uh, makes for an interesting trip. Um, you know, risks on this are, are this large open water crossings. Um, it is cold water. So cold water, water slash weather can be a factor. Um, and uh, ship traffic. Every once in a while, you have some ship, ship traffic if you're crossing in between um, some of the ports there. Uh, Wyoming backpacking. This one, um, three different areas. So it's a little bit uh, more detail as far as those go. Um, the uh, Shoshone National Forest um, in Wyoming. Montana has the Custer National Forest, and Idaho has the Selway Bitterroot National Forest. All three offer high alpine tundra and tree-filled valleys, um, anywhere from 5,000 to 13,000 feet in elevation. Um, 
they're all a little bit unique in their own in their own right where Wyoming's um, Shoshone National Forest most of that trip is on trail and um, however it's the highest in elevation uh, the Custer National Forest it's in between an elevation but mostly off trail and then the Selway Bitterroot um, is mostly uh, it's the lowest in elevation um, but it's also got the best trees ever and it also has uh, it's probably the most rugged trip that we do uh, of the three a little bit on trail a little bit off trail there they should expect uh, boulder fields um, high peaks narrow river valleys uh, there are grizzly bears and I believe grizzlies have kind of made their way down into the winds now so um, all three areas will most likely have grizzly bear activity uh, moose wolf trout black bear elk um, mule deer the selway bitterroot which this is a picture of it was an old burn area the selway bitterroot also has rattlesnakes and i believe wyoming and montana also have rattlesnakes but in the lower lower elevations um, you'll travel to and from camp uh, via contracted coach bus and then the Idaho will also have a different contracted um, shuttle from Montana out to Idaho. You have one resupply along the way and um, around day 12 and that can be by horseback if you're in Wyoming. It will be by a shuttle van if you're in Montana and by an airplane if you're in Idaho and I believe this is the Idaho one where they're hiking up to that ranger station. Uh, you'll cover about 100 miles and over the entirety of the trip, uh, which is an average of four to six miles a day, and there's a couple days off, so some of those days are a little bit longer. Um, clearly, when you're backpacking with heavy packs, uh, there's um, concern for sprains and overuse injuries, um, but primarily your biggest risks out there will be river crossings, um, bear encounters, and then falls. Um, if if uh, it's unsturdy footing for many of uh, all three of these trips, even if you're on trail in Wyoming. A uh, quick rundown of the schedule here. I know this is a lot, but uh, the Canuckers will arrive on the 20th and do some whitewater training and get out of camp on the 25th. So the typical in-camp stuff is the same except for that whitewater training. Uh, they'll also do flat water paddling. They'll pack out gear. They'll do some ropes course, group. Uh, uh, group involved or group get to know you type stuff um, and then they'll be on trail on the 27th it's quite a long bus ride up there um, but they'll be on trail for 30 days the mariners and the westerns arrive here on the 28th and they'll depart camp on the 2nd of july um, hitting trail on the 3rd and the 4th respectively for the mariner and the western and they both get a resupply about halfway and come off trail on the 27th and all trips return here on the 28th. And then there's a paddle in and banquet dinner. So this is new if you haven't had a child go through the advanced or the expo level. Um, we invite all the parents to come here to Manitowish. Uh, the next year will be on the 29th at 4.30, we ring the bell and all the paddlers come from around the island, um, kayakers and canoeists, and the backpackers hike from, hike from the Manitowish Leadership Center and uh, they hike down the shoreline and everybody's singing break out the oars and that's the first time they see their parents in about a month so um, it's a pretty emotional event um, but uh, parents love it kids love it and then there's a, a banquet dinner and a slideshow following it and uh, if you could make it um, participants really enjoy it um, we understand that some of you are coming from afar so you might not be able to make it but we do it at the advanced level and we do another one at the expeditionary level. Um, and then uh, participants leave the following day. And that's um, that's typically the case. Some people try to uh, see if they can pick up their kids when they come to the banquet dinner, but um, that evening doesn't get over till about 10 o'clock. And it's highly um, advised against just because uh, the participants will go back and do their final closing with their uh, leaders. And you know they'd rather spend that night with their leaders in their group um, rather than their parents, no offense, um, but that's pretty typ typical. Some of the things uh, for our staff training, um, our staff training is really intense. It's an 11 day staff training. 
Uh, it'll go from the 5th to the 15th next year with a five-day training trip in there. Our backpackers to the Porkies, our canoeists in the immediate area, and they'll also go to the St. Croix River to practice their whitewater, and the kayakers will go up to the Apostles. Um, th this is a fast and furious staff training. We, we focus on group dynamic issues. We focus on character and leadership development as well as technical skills. Um, uh, we've been getting better at better at our staff training over the years, and I can't imagine next year will be any different. All of our leaders at this level will have first responder. Um, they'll also have a CPR certification and wilderness water safety or lifeguarding. Um, our canoeists, like I stated earlier, will have a lot of whitewater training, so they'll be at about a level three in the ACA whitewater training um, course. And our kayakers will be level three or four in ACA coastal kayaking. Both those levels are essentially, they'll, they'll be both competent in the skills as well as be able to teach the skills. Um, so that is kind of what those numbers mean. Um, our leaders, our leaders are awesome. Um, I'm beginning to look for leaders now. Uh, we'll be sending out our rehire form in a couple weeks here and we'll be getting those back and I'll start hiring leaders. I'm sure these trips will fill fast and which allows me to hire earlier and uh, make sure I lock in the best leaders uh, possible early on. Um, leaders need to be mentally and physically capable of doing a trip of, of this uh, nature. And I choose them based upon their judgment and their leadership. And a lot of it is based upon what they do outside this organization. So I know what they do here and I can see what they do here. Um, but what impresses me is when our leaders go from here to the outside world and they lead trips for other people or they lead group organizations. Um, they do some extra tutoring in school. They teach people. They work with people. Um, those make the best leaders year in and year out because they're pooling all of those experiences and then they come back here. So one of the first things I ask our leaders is, what did what are you doing in your off season, quote unquote, um, to make yourself a better leader? And those that can answer that question and that I know um, are are bettering themselves will most likely get the ticket to lead at this level. And that's just about it um, for me. Um, like I said, I'm going to stop the recording and I will uh, open it up to questions. That was fairly quick. I might have skipped over some stuff, but I'm uh, more than happy to answer gear questions and whatnot. Um, if you're viewing this at home on a recording, um, please take down questions, call me, email me with those, and hopefully I can get back to you before enrollment or just after, and uh, we'll take uh, I'll take those one at a time. So thank you very much. and. Uh, and if you don't have questions, you can definitely dip out and have a good, good night. Thanks for tuning in.